They did it. They showed us what the console looks like. Here it is, the PlayStation 5 in all of its, I don't know, glory, I guess. And sure, it kind of looks like a new Las Vegas Strip hotel or some kind of trendy new terminal at some international airport. And yeah, I guess maybe you could call it a robot with its collar popped. But guess what? Love it or hate it, it kind of doesn't matter what the PS5 looks like. Because yeah, it's nice to see what their next console design is, but at the end of the day, it's just a box. Besides, you're not buying this thing based off what it looks like. And if you are, that's strange. Sony didn't just show off the PS5's looks, gave us a peek at a number of accessories that will be available for the system too, including a headset, HD camera, media remote, and a dual controller charging stand. You can actually check out a breakdown of that new controller. We did a video for that a couple weeks ago. Also, as a surprise, it turns out there's gonna be two versions of the PS5 at launch, one with a disc drive and one without. Here's hoping that digital version goes for a bit cheaper, but we didn't get any pricing details just yet, so stay tuned for that. I just hope they'll let you swap out your own hard drive, but for that, we'll also need to wait and see. So the main focus of Sony's event were the more than two dozen titles showcased, some we'd already heard about, like Arcane's Deathloop and Tango Gameworks' Ghostwire Tokyo. But what really surprised me was finding out just how many of these games are in fact console exclusives like the two I just mentioned and other new IPs like Project Athia. It seemed like there was really something for everyone which you have to be excited about as we enter this new generation of console gaming. Indie studios shared a lot of the spotlight here too with really compelling debuts of games like Kenna, Bridge of the Spirits, Little Devil Inside, Stray, and Jet the Far Shore. This was also the stage for some major third-party publishers to reveal their next-gen ambitions as well. We got a first look at Capcom's highly anticipated Resident Evil 8, as well as a new game called Pragmata. And then, of course, it wouldn't be a Sony event without their first-party muscle. There weren't too many surprises in this department, but we did get a teaser trailer for a new Spider-Man game where you play as Miles Morales hitting later this year, and the sequel to Horizon Zero Dawn, Horizon Forbidden West, which I wouldn't expect to release for a pretty long time. Insomniac Games showed off a good-sized demo of the next Ratchet & Clank game called Rift Apart that showed how Ratchet seemed to be able to warp to different dimensions on the fly. This definitely felt like the perfect use case for Sony's super fast SSD tech that they've been boasting about, and seeing it in action was actually pretty sick. Another rumor of Demon's Souls getting a remake came true, as we got a lengthy trailer of that game, which is set to hit the console exclusively as well. And for all of the hardcore racing sim fans that might have felt like they were being left out as of late, Gran Turismo 7 was also officially announced for PS5. Now, there were a ton of games, I couldn't hit all of them, so be sure to check out our replay coverage of the event. You know, it's kind of interesting to watch the different approaches Sony and Microsoft both have taken in terms of the dissemination of information about their next consoles. Microsoft has been super heavy on the features list, talking up things like Smart Delivery and Game Pass, where Sony hasn't leaned much into features, but more system architecture and now, of course, their software library and exclusive games. There's still plenty of time for these to drop though, so I'm expecting much more info to spill out over the summer and into the fall. It's pretty wild. This event felt very much like an E3 presentation, and yeah, I mean, it makes sense. It's time. Of course, now everyone waits to see how Sony positions the PS5's price. It's a pretty big detail that everyone sort of just collectively braces for, and whoever announces first, Sony or Microsoft, might be leaving themselves vulnerable to be undercut. Well, that's gonna do it for me. Uh, let me know what you think about Sony's PS5 stream, the games, the hardware. What do you think it looks like? I, I saw someone on Twitter say that it looked like something Alienware would have designed in 2005. That's, that's pretty good. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.